All right, we're going to start today. Uh, we're going to continue with how to overcome fear. And Monica is going to be sharing something, hopefully, with this congregation next week. I hope you'll be prepared. This new stuff happening in Monica and Eddie's life and their family. Amen. New, exciting stuff. And hopefully they'll, they'll be able to share that with us next time. Okay, so you, you, you tell Eddie that I put you on the spot okay. to, to share this next week. I would have had you share, I would have asked you today, but I don't want to catch you off guard. All right, so uh, we're sharing how to overcome fear, and we're up to part four, and I'm calling this a different kind of fear. We've been saying a lot of things about fear, uh, but this time we're talking about a different kind of fear. But first, let me recap last week so we can, you know, just go forward from there. Our, our, uh, our theme text has been Nehemiah 6.9, Nehemiah 6.9, and I will read it. Uh, Nehemiah is saying, For they all were trying to make us afraid, saying, Their hands will be weakened in the work, and it will not be done. They were all trying to make us afraid, saying, Their hands will be weakened in the work, and it will not be done. So that had to do with the rebuilding of the walls of Jerusalem, with the people of God that were set, being set free from Babylonian captivity and allowed to come back. To their native land and to rebuild Jerusalem. So now the walls had to be rebuilt because that was their security. The cities that, that were, were to be safe had to have a wall around them to keep the enemy out. So the, there were people trying to stop the work of God and stop the people of God. So they were using fear tactics. So they said their hands will be weakened in the work. So the devil knows that fear works. And we said that the purpose of fear, here's the purpose of fear, okay, is defeat. Defeat. Satan, through one way or another, will try to hinder you from doing God's will or God's work in your life. And he'll use fear because if you give into it, you'll be defeated in that endeavor. You'll back off. And that's what he's after. And then we said that the purpose of faith, because faith is the opposite of fear. If anybody asks you what's the opposite of fear, it's faith. And the purpose of faith is support. God has given us faith to support us in what we do concerning God. To support us in the work of God that He's called us to do. To support us in anything that has to do with God in our life. So the purpose of fear is defeat. The purpose of faith is is support okay so that's the background that we have been working with we've been saying that through the first uh, three parts and now part four we said that we're going to talk about a different kind of fear because i can't leave this part out even though we live in america and we are so sophisticated we're not like those third world nations so many believers think that and and, and so much has been written about that for years concerning uh europe Canada and America, we're considered the modern world, okay? But fear can also be the work of an evil spirit. Evil spirits aren't limited to second or third world countries. There are plenty of evil spirits at work in the good old U.S. of A. Can you say amen? amen. It's the truth. They might uh, at times appear to be sophisticated de devils, but uh, demons because there's only one devil, sophisticated demons, but they're still demons, okay? And uh, I want to talk about that. Ephesians 6.12, Ephesians 6.12, and I'm going to read the verse. Speaking about believers, we, for we as believers, we do not wrestle against flesh and blood. Our fight is not against people. And the devil will use people a lot of times to get to us, and we get to dislike people, and we have to be careful we don't get to hate folks. But uh, he's saying, he's telling us the truth that we need to understand as Christians, our fight, we don't wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this age, against spiritual hosts of wickedness in the heavenly places. All those descriptions are in reference to demon forces. How he had the insight to break them up to principalities, powers, rulers of the darkness of this age against spiritual hosts of wickedness in heavenly places. 
I don't know. That's the kind of insight that God had given this great apostle Paul who wrote this book of Ephesians. But this is demon spirits at work in the earth. And our fight, or the ones that we wrestle against, is that. Our fight is not against people, even though people, once again, can be used of the enemy. If we're not careful, the enemy will use us. We can have a weak moment and we can say some stuff or do some stuff that's harsh or hard against another believer. All right, somebody says, well, what about the scripture in 2 Timothy 1.7 that says, for God has not given us a spirit of fear. Okay, so that's, that's a, a scripture. Uh, that's not fear that we're discussing. The Greek word there, fear, is more like timidity. The, the apostle was saying, uh, you know Timothy? Timothy was a young preacher, and he was kind of timid. He didn't want to speak because he was younger, and he didn't want to speak uh, against the older or the elders, so to speak. And in that day, that was important. The younger had a high respect in those cultures for the older, and he didn't want Timothy to be restricted by that because with timidity. So he says, God has not given us as believers a spirit of fear. It's talking about being timid, that kind of fear. Not a dread of evil spirits, a, a dread uh, or a danger of being hurt by someone. So that scripture really does not apply here concerning demon spirits. And I've heard it so many times. Well, God has not given us a spirit of fear, but a power of love and of a sound mind. And people use that in a reference to demon spirits. But that's not what it's talking about. So we have to leave that in the right setting. All right. So I just thought I would touch that in case you were wondering about that. Uh, Having said all this, I want to look at various situations. Somebody say various situations. Various okay? situations. Okay? So in which fear causing demon spirits, fear causing demon spirits, okay, can attach themselves to believers and oppress them. Okay? Now we said oppress them, not possess them. Sometimes we talk about demon spirits oppressing Christians. And somebody will, they'll hear like, well, Christians can't be demon-possessed, so I'm not talking about possession. Christians cannot be demon-possessed. Let's get that straight. Uh, if you're washed in the blood of Jesus, you're born again, your name's written in the last book of life, the Holy, your spirit, Holy Spirit possessed. The Holy Spirit lives in you. But you can be demon-oppressed. A demon can oppress you can give you a hard time, can come against you, can make your life miserable, and that's what they do. That's their assignment. That's their job. And if they don't, they got to deal with Satan, their leader. Satan will make sure that those demons are assigned to you, and demons have been assigned to you, just like guardian angels have been assigned to you. Demon, Satan, everything he does, he, he, he saw God do something, and he copycat. He copycats everything. So there are demons assigned to you. Their job is to give you a hard time to oppress you and to hopefully get you to the point to where you think it's just you. To where you don't believe. There's places and churches that they'll never say the word demons oppress you because they're afraid that most of the people will get up and leave. We don't want to hear about devils in the church. Well, why not? If you don't want to hear about devils in the church, they're probably comfortable in that church. That's the problem with that. Devils, demons are real. They can't possess me, but they can oppress me. So once again, we want to be look, we're going to look at various situations in which these fear-causing demon spirits can, I said can attach themselves to believers. Why? To oppress them. Okay, so I'm going to give you some situations. I want to go to situation number one. Okay, here's situation number one, where demons can attach themselves to believers and oppress them. Listening to the wrong thing. Listening to the wrong thing. And I'm talking about listening willfully and consistently giving ear to bad news. Now, we have a pick here that's talking about don't listen to bad social media advice. If you're doing it on a regular basis, yeah, if you're doing it regularly, I'm talking about, it, it could be a lot of bad news. But let's single out the media because right now we're living in the days of COVID-19 and, and this fear mongering that the media is doing causing us to fear in a way that we shouldn't. Non-Christians should not be involved in this kind of fear. Christians especially should never cave into this kind of fear. But if you 
willfully, purposely keep watching all these liberal stations, but and you're doing it regularly, don't be surprised that an evil spirit watch, is watching you, because they are watching you. They're, they're, I just said, and I mean it with all my heart, uh, all of us have been assigned by Satan some demon spirits to trip us up. He hates our guts. He can't get at Jesus, so he's going to try to get those that believe in Jesus, us believers. So when you're doing something willfully, consistently, these demons are watching you. They're casing out the joint. They're, they're watching everything you do. They will attach themselves to you to oppress you. They, you will give them permission to do so by your actions. Even though you may not be mentally aware of it, but in the spirit realm, that to them is permission. And God has to allow it because God made us free moral agents. If that's the decision we made, well, God has to back up and allow it to happen. The Holy Spirit is speaking to us inside. Don't do this. anything that's going to hurt you. The Holy Spirit's faithful. He'll lead you and guide you into all truth. That's what the Bible says. Jesus said that that's what the Holy Spirit, one of the things He would do when He came. And He would come and live within us. Our bodies are the temple of the Holy Spirit. So if we're doing something willfully that's going to hurt us, demon spirits, take advantage of it. So situation number one, listening to the wrong thing. A demon spirit can take advantage of it. And uh, I said here, too many or too much time is given to negative media reports. This has left too many people full of worry, fear, and demonic oppression. Now, some people hear that, ah, well, yeah, Pastor, yeah. it's real, man. Understand the, the spiritual realm. This is real. Psychologists are making a lot of money dealing with situations like this. They'll probably tell you because they don't know better. Most psychologists I've ever heard of or, or, or read their reports don't, are not Christians. And if they say they are, they don't believe a whole lot. They don't understand how the uh, spiritual things work. They'll try to take you down uh, to the place where you were a kid. And you probably picked up some fear there. And uh, they, they always try to bring you back to something to try to explain how it wasn't your fault. And it's just something that happened to you in your childhood. So they'll tell you a bunch of nonsense. Now, some of that stuff can be true. But all of it is not true. Okay? There are situations where people have been traumatized in their youth. And I can think of some. I've known some folks that that's happened to. But uh, by and large, that has hap hasn't happened to people. But they'll take you to that because that's all they know. Their, their knowledge, knowledge is limited. So if you're given to this, you're listening too much, you can be taken advantage of. And you're going to start worrying. You're going to be afraid. Uh, and demonic oppression now has taken uh, root in your life. Not in you, but around you. Attacking you making life miserable, and you're doing it to yourself. We've all been guilty of it at one time or another, and it takes a preacher getting on our case, or the Holy Spirit, if we're fortunate enough, he usually will speak to us, but sometimes we don't listen, so then he, he might have a good Christian friend speak to us. And if, and if we still don't listen, like a lot of times we won't, then we'll have a preacher, and another preacher, and somebody to wake us up. But many times people, ah, that's not a thing. It's just the news, man. And then they'll say, yeah, don't listen to that. You don't know what he's talking about. Yeah, no, just, let's watch the news together. And he gets, and the, the, you, you sit down to watch something, and the devil come next to you, and he shares your chips. You give him one, he takes one, and you think, I don't know what kind of, he likes hot sauce, real hot. <laughs> you know, they like hot sauce. And, uh, and, and you, ah, it doesn't happen. You guys are too much. No, it does happen. It does happen. You keep listening to bad news, you're going to be afraid. You're going to be worried. It works on your mind. Okay? Satan's intelligent. I don't know about demons, but Satan is intelligent. And the demons have to do what they're told. Satan has a kingdom. Jesus said there's a kingdom. Well, I know in the kingdom there's hierarchy. There's ranks. So the guy with the higher important uh, authority uh, can uh, direct the ones under him. The Apostle Paul in Ephesians 6, 12, he just listed uh, the four levels right there. There might be more. Okay, that was situation number one in which fear-causing demon spirits can attach themselves to believers. Not to, not, not to possess them, but to oppress them. Situation number two. Are you ready? Yes. Being in the wrong place. 
being in the wrong place. And I'm talking about with your consent. Not being in the wrong place by accident. I'm not talking about that. You just happen to be walking through a rough neighborhood. That can happen. Okay, that's happened to me growing up in Brooklyn. That's happened to me uh, uh, go in Long Beach one time when I was a young man. With, uh, Dave Ruiz and my younger brother, we went to, uh, was at the Pike over there, and it was a night I we didn't know. So we stayed, we stayed there maybe too long. And as we're walking out to the car, there's some rough looking uh, roughnecks. And I said, I seen that look before in Brooklyn. What are those guys doing? It's supposed to be in Brooklyn. What are they doing in Long Beach? <laughs> the same R looks that you could feel. You could feel that we, you could feel danger, and there were a lot of people. I don't know what happened after dark. This, these guys came out from I don't know where. <laughs> yeah, so, but we, we we didn't. You know, we had God's protection. We weren't afraid, but I could scent. You know, when you grew up getting chased by gangs in New York, you develop a sense. Okay. When you've been confronted with a gun and knives and, and surrounded by guys at different times. And I, I never did any of that. I never belonged in a gang. I never did any of that. But I had to deal with it growing up in Brooklyn. And because of my mother.